What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. In this video I just want to show you one of my scopes that just recently failed and it was mounted on my elephant gun which is a 416 Ruger and the 416 Ruger can generate 5,500 foot-pounds of muzzle energy so it's almost as powerful as a 458 lot and the rifle that I'm shooting this round out of only weighs like eight and a half pounds so it generates 60 pounds of free recoil and just to give you a comparison of how much recoil that is a 338 wind mag firing 250 grain bullets with a muzzle velocity of 2700 feet per second generates right around 30 pounds of free recoil so this firearm basically generates double the recoil of a 338 Win Mag with 250 grain bullets. Now for most people, a 338 Win Mag is like the upper limit of recoil tolerance. A 338 Win Mag has more recoil than a 12 gauge slug or a heavy 3006 or a heavy 300 Win Mag round. Now 3006 with 180 grain bullets with a muzzle velocity of 2700 feet per second generates 20 pounds of free recoil so basically three times the recoil of a hot 3006 round okay that's how much recoil this firearm can generate and double the recoil of a hot 338 wind mag so it's a lot of recoil and I'm not doing this video to bash the company by any means. I'm a huge fan of Athlon. I have three of their scopes. I have one on a 300 Win Mag, and then I have one on an AR-10 308. And the one that's on my 300 Win Mag, I've put hundreds of rounds through that rifle with that scope. And that's a mid-range scope. I only paid like $550 for it and it's still holding up well i'm telling you guys hundreds of rounds maybe even a thousand rounds of 300 win mag with that athlon scope and no issues and i've taken that rifle out to a thousand yards very often probably dozens of times out to a thousand yards and i use the turrets and no issues at all so I'm not doing this to bash Athlon I think Athlon is an excellent company I love their scopes their scopes are extremely high quality I really love their turrets their turrets are really rugged and I've never had any tracking issues and they're very simple to readjust and uh, re-zero a lot of scope companies they have very complicated zero stop systems you need special tools and setting your zero stop is very complicated or resetting your zero is very complicated but what i like about athlon scopes is that their turret system is very simple you can adjust your zero in the field you can adjust your zero stop in the field with no special tools just either a flat screwdriver or maybe the back of a knife or a coin and i think that's really important because because you just never know what situation you're going to be in. And I've had bad experiences with some of these zero stop systems on various scopes. I've had them break. I've had to readjust the zero stop on one of my rifles. And it completely threw off my zero. And I had to spend a lot of time and money re-zeroing that rifle. So that's one thing I really like about Athlon scopes is their turrets. Never had any tracking issues. Like I said, that one Athlon scope on my 300 Win Mag, I've put hundreds of rounds through it, and the turrets are still tracking well. Very simple to use. Nice solid clicks. So that's a huge plus to the Athlon scopes. Obviously, the price is good. The lenses are really good. The clarity is good. I've never had any issues with any of my Athlons except for this one. And like I said, that 416 Ruger is generating twice the recoil of a 338 Win Mag and three times the recoil of a full house 306. Okay, so 
you know, that's a lot to ask of any scope. So I want to just show you guys what happened. And this is the reason why you want to always test your gear before you actually use it in real world situations. Okay. So I put like two or 300 rounds through that 416 Ruger with this scope. And so that's a, a lot of beating. Okay. But I'm glad that it failed here at home at the range rather than in Africa somewhere on a once in a lifetime hunt or in Alaska, you know, so this is why you test your gear. You test different things to see what works, what doesn't. And um, I want to just show you guys how this thing failed. So first what happened was about 30 rounds ago, I noticed that this eyepiece was loose. Okay, they have some kind of adhesive here that holds this eyepiece to the rest of the scope tube. Now this is a one-piece scope tube. Okay, so it is a one-piece design. But this eyepiece is obviously separate, and so as you can see, it's turning here. It shouldn't turn. So I noticed about 30 rounds ago that this thing was starting to turn. And then the other day, I took it to the range, and I was testing out my suppressor with this rifle, which I've never shot this rifle with my suppressor before. And uh, finally, the lens inside here cracked so let me just show you guys what that lens looks like i'm going to show you what it looks like now looking through the scope let me see if i can if i can center it so you can see that there's a crack there okay you see that hairline that wasn't there before okay you can see that that crack on the bottom there all right so let me show you guys now what happened inside the scope so i unscrewed the eyepiece and here we have the rest of the scope now if you don't know how scopes work if you have a second focal plane scope you have lenses in this section right here okay this is what's known as the erector assembly if you have a first focal plane the erector assembly is up here okay and so basically you have like another tube in here and when you adjust your turrets there's springs underneath this internal tube. They're underneath and they're on the sides. And when you're using the turret, they're pressing down against those springs, okay? And so you have lenses in here, and those lenses are for the purpose of adjusting your magnification. Like this one is a one to six power, and it's second focal plane. You have a magnification lens, and then you have what are known as erector lenses. Now, what those lenses do is they reverse the image because you have your objective lens here and the light comes in through the objective lens and when it comes in the objective lens here turns the image upside down okay and so as the light comes through you have more lenses in here that flip the image back to the way it's supposed to be and then you have your ocular lens over here okay so there's actually lenses in here, small lenses, that will actually flip the image to the proper orientation, okay? Because the objective lens flips the image upside down, okay? So there's lenses in here, and then you have your magnification lens, and this is where that crack occurred. I'm going to see if I can show you guys. Okay, so there's the reticle on that lens, and you can see that little hairline crack on the lens okay i mean i could still shoot with this it's just that i can't zoom up past like one and a half power it's stuck and i think that's because of the crack because it's cracked i can't turn the magnification up okay so it's stuck as you can see i'm trying to turn it and it won't go past like one and a half, all right? So when I turn it, you see it's it's stuck, all right? I can't go anymore. So if it was a dangerous game hunt, it wouldn't be the end of the world because I could still use it on one power. So it wouldn't be the end of the world, but, you know, I wouldn't be able to zoom up or anything. So you can see here they had this 
adhesive or some kind of Loctite that holds that eyepiece on and the recoil loosened that adhesive up and broke the seal I guess and that's why the eyepiece was no longer connected to it so you know to be fair you could still use this you know it just has that splinter in the lens so if it was a dangerous game hunt like I said I could still use this on one power so in an emergency I would still have that but I wouldn't be able to dial up so that's pretty much it guys I'm going to be sending this back for warranty Athlon has a lifetime warranty that's transferable